Hello guys, what's up? It's Bloomer here, and today we're going to be talking about the uses of the Smart Alarm. The two best uses, in my opinion, for the Smart Alarm, and how to set them up correctly. There are some usages out there that I do not believe are smart. Some of them use a little too much wiring than they should, and that is what today's tutorial is going to be about, is how to correctly use the Smart Alarms, in my opinion. If you guys are new to my channel, please leave a description, leave a like on this video as well if you find it useful, and let me know down in the comment section below what you'd like to see that you need help with in Rust, anything in general. I love helping people in Rust, and I am pretty smart at the electrical side, so let me know as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first design I want to show you guys is actually one of my favorite designs, yet I have not had to use it yet on a server. Anyways, this design pretty much detects anytime somebody is breaking into your base. If they break a wall or pretty much any foundation that has a wall above it, as long as these walls are broken, which is what these switches are placed on, the smart alarm will be detected. Sadly for this design, if somebody does go through your doors, it will not go off. But you can go ahead and implement the next design that I will be going into, which implements the HVHF sensors. This design only helps detect players that are breaking through your walls. Although you cannot place switches on the floor, that's sad. This design would be a lot better if you could place switches on the floor. Anyways, to get started, you're going to need a battery source, obviously. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and connect it first to an electrical branch. You're going to want some power here to your blocker at the bottom. And then once we place that, we're going to go ahead and go all the way over here, power up all of your electrical branches. Your electrical branches will vary on how many switches you do have placed or what all is needed. I actually do not need to use all of these electrical branches for the switches that I have placed right now. And there's an or, or an AND gate right here and switch that we can use if we do go over the switch limit. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, although I am pretty new to the tutorials of electrical with rust. I actually still know what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and power these even though we technically do not need them all powered. So now that we have all of these electrical branches powered, one of them is not powered because, well, it has issues when you configure it, it automatically turns on randomly. So anyways, to make this tutorial easy for you guys to understand, I want to show you guys how to use it if you're going to have more than one or more than enough switches on all of your walls to where you have to have more than one battery source. So we're going to go ahead and use only two of these switches here and then one of these switches will go to another battery source. Alright, so we have two switches powered so far. So technically, once these switches are broken, if somebody breaks through the wall, it will automatically turn off this block pass through here, which gives power to your smart alarm. I highly suggest having your first electrical branch and your blocker in an electric room more centralized in your base. Otherwise, if somebody does break this wall here, it will not affect the smart alarm at all. It'll automatically turn off all of this power that should be going through the blocker once one of these switches is broken. So now that we have two switches placed and two switches powered, we're going to want to go ahead and put it, put one of them into the AND switch. So currently this one is outputting zero, it says. So this one's inputting two. So you follow back. If you don't know how to use electrical branches, Basically, your branches off is what's going to go to your left side and all your leftover power is going to go to your top right side. So right now we are losing power. We have zero left on this switch. Each switch takes about two consumption after you lose power over the line. So we're going to need at least six so we can reach the AND gate here. But I'm going to go over a little bit just so we have enough extra power to reach the blocker as well as the smart alarm. So I'm gonna to go to about 12, hopefully it outputs 12. Looks like it's outputting 15. We are getting to 10 right here. We're gonna go ahead and bring this over here. 
So now that we have this correctly powered, it is pulling 33 power if this is powered. Both of these lights need to be green for this output to actually work. An AND gate basically works as, as long as their power in both ends, it will give an output. We'll be getting into the OR gates later, which is as long as one input is receiving power, the power will go out. This is just for if you are gonna be placing more than enough switches. Typically, you could probably fit about 40, 45 switches to one battery pack. That is if it's a large battery pack because each switch consumes two power. Large battery can, puts out 100 power and a medium puts out only 50 power. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and actually use it in another power source that I have way over here. Although it is not powered yet. We're gonna go ahead and do this really quickly. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and power this second electrical branch. Now it is full of power. That's a full 50 power coming into it. We're gonna give this one enough power here for eight. So now it's outputting seven. So to make this more organized for you guys, this extra switch, which is gonna be on your second power because you're placing too many switches, you need another electrical source. There, your next switch will go up into the AND switch. So basically, as you see, both of these lights are on, meaning it is giving an output. It's giving an output to the blocker, which disables the output on the blocker. We are placing it on the left side. The AND switch goes to the left side, which blocks power when power is received to the left side. And you're gonna want at least two or four power coming out of the right side or left side, whichever way you configure your electrical branch. You're gonna want enough power coming out of this to go through this to the smart switch so you, or smart alarm. You're gonna need at least four output on this block, on this electrical branch to the blocker to the smart alarm. So right now, if we do connect it, it will not do anything. As you can see here, all switches are on. If somebody were to break through this base right now through one of these walls where these switches are placed, it will automatically turn on the alarm. As you can see here, the output is zero. It's going all the way to this AND switch, which gives no output here, all the way across to the blocker, which turns off the power to the blocker, which mo er, face punch is a little bit broken. It shouldn't be saying any power is received here, but there isn't any power received here because those are both off. So once there's no power received here, your electrical branch will be going through your blocker to the smart alarm. As you can see right now, the smart alarm is moving around. Hopefully this part of the tutorial was not as hard as I made it. I will be doing some cutscenes through it, so hopefully it'll be fixed a little bit. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to my next part, which is the HBHF sensor. We will be combining both of these in the end as well. But anyways, for the HBHF sensor, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything and show you guys how it works. All right, so for the HBHF sensor, you are gonna need HBHF sensors, as many as you want, and pretty much you're gonna need an electrical branch for about every HBHF sensor, plus you're gonna need enough for your smart alarm and enough to power through your OR switch as well. Anyways, to go ahead and get started, we are gonna power our electrical branches. I highly suggest using your most outputted, highest outputted power into the first AND switch. If you're using more than one AND switch, I highly recommend dividing this power between the two AND switches. So we are gonna go ahead and divide the power here in half. So as you can see here, it's outputting 40. We're gonna configure it to 20. So it's basically giving each half and half this is going to give the maximum power output to your smart alarm. Now you're going to want to go ahead and plug in the branches out to each HBHF sensor on the power inside. Sorry for the mess here, it's going straight up there. So right now both HBHF sensors are powered. 
and there goes my wood building thing that I didn't even connect to the space. And so we're going to go ahead and connect each HVHF sensor to an AND switch. So I was saying earlier something and I was completely wrong. Each HVHF sensor, you're going to need an AND switch for. Each set of two HVHF sensors, you're going to need an OR switch. And each time you have an AND switch, you're going to need at least two electrical branches. One's going to power your HVHF sensor and the other is going to power your AND switch. You're going to want a decent amount of power going into your AND switch, which is what's coming from your electrical branch originally. And you can only you only need to output two to your HVHF sensors. So right now we have both HVHF sensors connected to our AND switches, which right now neither of them are activated. If we go ahead and include authorized, this one will go off. As you can see, it's giving both green lights, which will eventually activate what we're going to go into next which is going to be the OR switch. So we're going to connect one AND switch to the OR switch and another AND switch to the OR switch. This is for using only two HVHF sensors. If you're only using one HVHF sensor, you can forget about this OR switch and connect your AND switch right here straight into your smart alarm. Basically, this will both these lights will turn green if your HVHF sensor is activated. I am really confused by this. I don't like how it works. Anyways, go ahead and test with it. If you're included on it, that means it will go off. If you are excluded from it, that means it will not go off if you are there. So now we have the AND switch plugged in here and we have the AND switch plugged in here into the OR switch. The OR switch here will go over to your smart alarm so right now it is not going off but if we were to have an enemy trigger right now which technically we're not an enemy we're not a other person we're gonna go ahead and do include authorized which is basically simulating me as somebody not authorized and now the alarm goes off this one is only activated this one is not activated because I did not ex I did not include myself as you can see here this one is not activating both green lights. This one is activating both green lights. The only reason there's default one green light is because it's coming from the electrical branch. And the reason we are using the electrical branch for this is for extra power. These HVHF sensors cannot output more than one power, sadly. So that is why we are using the AND switch. I've seen other people use the memory cell, which I highly suggest not doing unless you want to do a ton more wiring than actually needed. I enjoy using the AND switches, I really understand them, and the OR switches as well. It's a lot less power and wiring than the memory cell, as I've seen other people use. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get all of these connected together, and we'll get this working as a set. Alright, so all you're going to need to do to connect both of these systems together is add an OR switch. As said earlier, I highly suggest this system being in a central room where people cannot break your walls to affect the wall effect that we have going on here with the switches. So you're gonna place this OR switch and one OR switch will go out to your output that is on your smart alarms, your HVHF sensors, I mean. Anyways, once one of these two HVHF sensors activates the red, green, red to green light, this OR switch will be activated, which will come all the way over here and activate one of these. The OR switch only needs one input to pull out an output. And right now we are getting how much power out of this? We will at least get 20 power out of this because the electrical branches are powering this through. HVHF sensors are only giving one. Although I don't know why it's saying 20, I don't know, face punch, why your electrical stuff is broken. Anyways, this will receive a 20, which is enough to power the smart alarm. This blocker right here, which is already plugged into this, is outputting zero. Although it says 32, actually we have a switch off. So it's now disabled. You can see the red light here. It is now outputting zero. We're going to go ahead and plug this blocker into the other end of this OR switch 
And now we're going to plug in the output of this OR switch to one of your smart alarms. So right now it is currently not activated. So if we went ahead and authorized ourselves on the HVHF sensor, it automatically output it. It automatically authorize it and turn it on. As you can see here, we got a green light, green light on the OR switch and green light on this OR switch. And that is for the HVHF sensors to work. Now, if somebody were to break a wall, it would still stay green because we still have not deauthorized ourselves on this. Now that we have deauthorized ourselves on this, if the wall is broken, it is still outputting a 1 here or a 20, whatever the maximum output is. As you can see, it's moving there. You can turn off and on this switch just to make sure. It's turned off now and there's no lights here. Switch breaks on the wall, alarm turns on. Anyways, if you guys have any questions about this tutorial, I know it was kind of fast, kind of messy. This is my first electrical tutorial. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and see you guys later.